Hey everyone, Scott Woods from Hawkridge Systems, and this is the first steps for 3D experience. So the initial steps. First, we need to agree to the software agreement. Without this step, we won't be able to proceed forward and initiate your 3D experience tenant. In order to sign the software agreement, a 3D experience ID is required. If you don't have one, you'll need to create one at this time. Once the software agreement has been accepted, we'll be able to launch your 3D experience platform. This entire step-by-step -step process is initiated through a single email, so you want to find that in your inbox. It'll look something like this. Okay, so let's walk through this. So you should receive this email, and if you didn't, let us know, we can provide it to you. This is a step-by-step -step process that will help you create your 3D experience ID, accept the software agreement, and initiate your platform. Keep in mind before proceeding forward, this will make you a user of your platform. So if you're not going to be a user and you've only purchased one license, then we want to make sure that the user that's going to be using that SOLIDWORKS or 3D experience license is going to be the same person that's going to walk through these steps. So to get started, click on the button that says launch your 3D experience platform. This will require you to log in using either a 3D experience ID or your SOLIDWORKS ID. If you don't have either, you can create one at this stage. If you need to create an ID, click on the button that says create your 3D experience ID. Fill out the required information and then select register. Log in with the credentials you just created and you'll be able to view the agreement. Once you log in with your 3D experience ID, you'll be set as your platform administrator and the next step is the software agreement. This is like many other software agreements. Once you read through it, you'll wanna click accept. Your platform will automatically be launched and you will be presented with what's called My First Dashboard, which is a dashboard that's designed to get you started. Here at Hawkridge, we've designed our own dashboard to get you going. The Hawkridge Systems dashboard is designed to give you everything you have access to through Hawkridge Systems, all in one easy to find location. We have a full 3D experience data management training course through Solid Professor and direct links to our support page where you can find support documentation and commonly asked questions. We also have direct links to our Ask an Expert sessions and how to install SOLIDWORKS documentation. And I'll go ahead and link that below this video. Next, we're going to assign roles. It's a simple process to assign roles to users so they can use that software. And then the last step, we'll install the software. In this video, I'm going to install 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS, but I'll talk about how to also install Collaborative Designer for SOLIDWORKS Desktop, which is a very similar process. In this video, we're going to assign roles to a user. So click on Platform Management, and then the tab that says Members. Click on the Information icon next to your name. This will bring up your user account and display all the roles you currently have enabled. In this list, identify the roles that you've purchased and want to add to your user account. Most likely, that will either be 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS or Collaborative Designer for SOLIDWORKS. In this case, I'm going to be installing 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. It automatically assigns the role, so now we can close this window. Now clicking on the compass in the upper left-hand corner will bring us back to our apps and roles. The role I want to enter is 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS. Again, your role might be different depending on what you're installing. And I'm going to click on SOLIDWORKS Connected. Because this is the first time I've installed anything 3D Experience on this machine, I'll first need to install the 3D Experience Launcher. The 3D Experience Launcher is an install assistant and is going to make installing applications a whole lot easier going forward. Once that's done, it should pop up and start the installation of SOLIDWORKS Connected. If that doesn't pop up, Simply go over to the icon for SOLIDWORKS Connected and click on it again. Okay, now we're ready to install SOLIDWORKS. It's going to ask a couple questions. The first one is just the welcome screen. We can go and click next on there. After that window, it will bring you to a cloud eligibility tool. If you know your device is compatible with cloud software, we can say next and skip this process. If you're unsure, click on the link that says 3D Experience Platform on Cloud Support, and that will direct you through some steps to check your computer for eligibility. The next window is simply where it's going to install. We'll click Next on there. And then, then a question where you want to put the Toolbox Wizard. We'll go and select the default location and click Next. 
This last window is going to let you know how much space you have left in your hard drive and how much is going to be downloaded. Select next to accept and then the process begins. And once the download is finished, it will automatically install. And then you're good to go. Click on SOLIDWORKS Connected again to launch SOLIDWORKS. For both 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS and Collaborative Designer for SOLIDWORKS, we do highly recommend you launch those from your browser. Since you're already logged into your 3D Experience account at this point, everything will launch and be connected. This is the first time we're launching this application, so we'll have to accept the cookies. And let's just go ahead and start a new part. So that's going to be File, New, Part. Once the part loads, you'll notice on the far right is a new tab for 3D Experience. And there's a status icon saying this part is new and has not been uploaded to 3D Experience yet. Once you upload a file to 3D Experience, that will turn green, letting you know that the version that's local and the version that's on the cloud are synced and exactly the same. If another user is to lock that file and work on it, you'll get a red lock letting you know that somebody else has taken ownership and is currently working on it. Thank you so much for watching. I truly hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions at all, please get in touch with us.